This morning, new concerns from the financial world. First Republic, a well-known regional bank, saw its stock drop nearly 50 percent yesterday after announcing a recent $100 billion drop in deposits. Now, this despite the billions it received from the nation's largest banks during last month's banking turmoil. So another U.S. regional bank is having big trouble as First Republic Bank dives another 20 percent with Bitcoin ready for 40K. And why is this happening? Well, we just got the data of a huge depositor exodus from the bank in March. And with this being the chart for First Republic Bank for the month, let's put into perspective just how big this depositor exodus is. $100 billion sounds like a whole lot of money. Just put it in perspective for us. Yeah, well, it was about 40% of their overall deposits. So a lot of clients are taking money out of the bank. And as you mentioned, Hoda, it's despite the fact that 11 of the largest banks put in $30 billion when a lot of the banking issues were cropping up about six weeks ago, when you recall Silicon Valley Bank and also Signature Bank ultimately went under. Now, First Republic, they haven't gone under. There's no talk about that happening right now. But when you see that 40 percent of the money was going out the door, you're wondering if we really are out of the woods after the banking issues about six weeks ago. And to offer even more perspective, well, months ago, this was seemingly a multi-bank problem, Signature, Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank. Today, it does just seem to be First Republic losing the deposits. Other regional bank stocks were up, reinforcing First Republic's predicament. They included PacWest, which did say Tuesday that it gained back some deposits in April after, yes, losing billions during the first quarter. Now looking at the chart of Bitcoin, how Bitcoin is reacting to this banking problem. The lesson, banks go down, BTC goes up. And if you're wondering why, let me just be real with you today. The mainstream will tell you that all these banks are insured, FDIC insurance, up to $250,000 per person. Reminding all Americans, $250,000 per depositor, that's how much you're insured up That was to. what I was going to ask you. People should not be panicking about this if they have their money there. That's right. And again, you have up to $250,000 in insured deposits. Yeah. Even if the bank that you have that money at yeah. fails, you will get that money back. Okay. And this is true people will be fine, but to me, not for the reasons that they say. Yes, there is FDIC insurance, but the dirty little secret is there's not enough for all banks. Keeping track, FDIC deposit insurance fund right now is about $128.2 billion, of course, minus what they spend on Signature, that's around $2.5 billion, minus the Silicon Valley Bank costs, that's minus another $20 billion. So right now, today, Again, using their public numbers, the FDIC insurance balance is about $105.7 billion versus the total insured deposits, $10.1 trillion, and total U.S. commercial bank deposits, $17.5 trillion. All the banks are broke. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking. Banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. There is not enough money, and that's okay. And let me explain. I, I'm not trying to cause a panic here. I'm just trying to keep it real with you. This is one of the explanations on why Bitcoin is going up, because the Fed has showed us time and time again, if they need to, whenever they need to, they will start back the money printer. As soon as Silicon Bank failed, they immediately started quantitative easing again. So yes, the US government will save you, but what they don't tell you is if they have to, it will be at the expense of your purchasing power. Question becomes, how many times can the FDIC do that? At what point is the FDIC broke? The FDIC is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. So if we need to, we try not to and don't want to, but if we need to, we can borrow from Treasury to uh, make up for any shortfall. So the FDIC never goes broke? We don't go broke. No, we're, we are the government. We're backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. And again, not to beat you over the head with this, but I loved this perspective from Peter Schiff. And the cost of living in the United States is going to double, it's going to triple, okay. it's going to quadruple, and it's going to impoverish the vast majority of Americans. And they need to know the reason they're going to be so poor is because of the government. It's not because of the free market, because we don't have one. It's because of this okay. big government. And Pal copped out when somebody asked him, would you need some help from fiscal policy? And he said, well, we don't want to give any fiscal policy advice. That's BS. Okay. He should be.
be giving advice when he knows the government is creating inflation by running these huge deficits. It's up to Powell to tell the government to stop doing that, to cut government oh, spending. But he refuses to stand up for the American public. Okay. He doesn't really want to do his job. Be sure to click subscribe for daily updates, keeping you informed about crypto. And I guess my final warning to Bitcoin holders is just to expect volatility. The only question remaining about First Republic Bank is whether or not they make it to Friday when banks usually are closed by the FDIC. What I can tell you right now is the next few days for First Republic are going to be crucial, uh, given the loss of deposits. And by the way, the fact that they did not include the 30 billion coming in in their overall, so you really, they did lose 100 billion, I not know. 70 billion in deposits. And I'm glad you said and that. A lot of people can read through that and then they wonder, well, why aren't you being fully transparent with us? And that actually raises more questions than it answers. But let me tell you what at least is my understanding is going on right now in terms of First Republic. There have been efforts made on, over the last few weeks. There continue to be many conversations, is my understanding, both White House and Treasury uh, and Fed in terms of what should happen here. What plan is there to potentially do what they would call an open bank scenario? In other words, a way to rescue the bank without it going into FDI receivership. That remains unclear. Right. One plan, right. one key plan would be to create some sort of special purpose vehicle where you get these same banks that were part of the consortium that put the deposits in, remember, roughly a month or so ago, that $30 billion, and you would get them to buy many of the bad loans on or the underwater loans on First Republic's balance sheet uh, above where they'd be marked. So you'd be paying a premium for them, perhaps below where they were made, but above where they'd be marked. And then the bank is able to go out and raise new equity, and I'm told it could do that were it to do the first part of that. And then maybe it is in a position to become a profitable bank again. Remember, right now, given what it's paying for its deposit base as it currently stands, and given where its loan uh, portfolio is, it's in no position to do much of anything. Hit the like button if you want to support me, if you got value from today's video. And just understand, as we're starting to see cracks in the traditional system, more and more people are waking up to Bitcoin. And by the way, Innovation is not stopping. Circle, the company behind Stablecoin USDC, launches cross-chain USDC transfer protocol for Ethereum Avalanche. The new protocol burns coins on the sending chain and mints new ones on the receiving chain. So obviously a huge announcement for this space. Circle has launched a mainnet protocol that lets users transfer USDC between Ethereum and Avalanche Previously, Avalanche users who held USDC on Ethereum had to deposit their coins within a Circle partner or use a third-party bridge to transfer their USDC coins from one network to the other. The new cross-chain transfer protocol, CCTP, appears to do away with this need for USDC bridges. Anybody that's going to be at Bitcoin Miami the conference, join us for Web3 as a joke. My brother and I will be doing some comedy about crypto. The link for this is down below, as well as use promo code altcoindaily for 10% off your ticket to Bitcoin conference. See you tomorrow.